guys, welcome to Iris After Hours. Here we are in Jerusalem, yeah, yeah. Israel, yeah. with prophets from the nations. Yeah. We have got Emma and Sarah Jane from Glasgow Prophetic Centre. Hello. Yes. And we've got Stacey Campbell, who is our board member for mm-hmm. Iris Global. And I love Iris, yes. Yes, and mm-hmm. she's done like two podcasts before with us. So, Stacey, mm-hmm. welcome back. Thank you. But how is it to, we are all here in Israel. What's yeah. going on? Why are you guys in Israel? <laughs> What's happening? You start. Well, we're here partly to introduce our children, actually. So we brought a whole set of teenagers here wow. because we want them to walk on the land. Yep. And we know that it anchors them more deeply in truth. But then as mums mm. and prophets, Come we're on. also here. God, what are you saying at yeah. this time? What is going on? Yeah. You know, what is our responsibility? Because we mm. want to be those who honour scripture, who pray for Jerusalem, mm. but actually as prophets to decree over her. Because we know when prophets decree a thing, then it gets established yeah Yeah. come on come on so i'm here with the passion translation with brian and candace simmons and wesley and i are dear friends with them and so we came last year with them they invited us again this year we're leading a bus and we're we're just opening the scriptures at all of these amazing sites in galilee no way jerusalem in bethlehem so we're traveling around and watching how the scriptures have been fulfilled ancient ancient scriptures Mm. that are being fulfilled and so when you're talking prophecy you can't omit the biblical prophets when you're talking about jerusalem come on so i mean yesterday our tour guide began to speak to us about this famous laughter of rabbi akiva and rabbi akiva started uh, uh they him and two or three other rabbis came to jerusalem and they saw her desecrated in uh, just absolutely desecrated and foxes, how long ago is, it, is this re- th- this was hundreds of years ago and, yeah. and they and they saw like uh foxes coming out of the holy of holies and the other two or three rabbis began to weep and rabbi akiva began to giggle and they said why are you laughing? And he said, why are you weeping? He said, because if Uriah's prophecy of her desolation is fulfilled, that means Zechariah's prophecy of Jerusalem becoming beautiful again will be fulfilled. So one half means the other half will happen. And here we are in Jerusalem with fulfilled prophecy where Jerusalem is beautiful again. And it's men, our children are filling the streets and laughing and it's Zechariah 8. And so it's pretty exciting to, to see these thousands of year old prophecies, you know, dating back to, you know, way, yeah. way back, actually happening in our lifetime. And so I'm, 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 I'm excited. This is real prophecy. Yeah, crazy, crazy. So, I mean, let's get right back to, to the fundamentals. Why, what is the significance of Israel in all of this for you guys? Like, mm, That's you know, a big question. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of parts mm, of that. But, but yeah. you know, it, this is, is it, well, why is this the foundation well, of our faith? Here? Uh, because all of the revelation of God we have, with very few exceptions, come from the Jews. Yep. There is no revelation of God that we have in the Bible that it was given you know, to the, to the Jews. They, God chose them and he began to reveal himself to the, the prophets, to the patriarchs. And from there, they wrote down what God showed us about himself and gave it to the rest of the world. So that was their job to give us the knowledge of God. Even the New Testament, you know, all, all of them, you know, except Luke, who he could have been a Hellenistic Jew, you know, uh, that they, they were, the, 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 the scriptures were given to us by Jews, mm. Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, Philip, you know. Come on. Uh, yeah, so they were, they were Jews. And so Paul. it's, so yeah, Paul, obviously. And so it's, and it's the, the debt that we owe to the Jew because he's, they've brought us the knowledge of God so that we can know him, you wow. know, and know him as he has described himself. So I, that's, I think, why the Bible says to the Jew first. It's not that God doesn't love all mankind, but he chose the Jew Mm. to reveal himself Mm. so that we could come to know personally, Mm. you know, apart from the veil, apart from the temple, Mm. apart from that, have direct uh, communion with God himself. Mm. And I think we all fell in love with the Jewish man. We fell in love with Jesus. It's true. And so I think in our hearts, we know how to love a Jewish man. Wow. So I think in the Christian's heart, 
we also find it easy to love the Jewish people. I oh, know it's it's strange, it, isn't it? You, you fall you in feel love that. almost yeah. instantly with the land. It's crazy and when you I come go, here. Well, how, how can I how can I fall in love with a nation mm. that fast? Mm. Because I already love Jesus. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I think when you come to the land, it, it's actually really small. Mm-hmm. And you think, Tiny. oh, maybe it's just, you know, it's going to be bigger and we're going to be driving ours. But actually, over that rock, you know, there's mm-hmm. where Deborah lived and mm-hmm. there's where Elijah went up in the whirlwind. There's Samuel's tomb and there's, where, tomb, and there's <laughs> Galilee. And, and, and two thirds of the gospel and, happened in Galilee. And, 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 and yeah, I love yeah. the fact that God mm-hmm. chose a small landmass mm-hmm. with a people that he loved to tell the story of scripture, <clears throat> that he wove the story of his passion in this piece, on this piece of ground. Yeah, and the, it's still here. And it's still here. And you, and can, you can come it. and visit it. It's <laughs> crazy. You can feel the force of, of Jesus' passion for us as you walk mm-hmm. here. Mm. You know, the force that drove him to Gethsemane mm-hmm. to weep <sighs> blood, the force that took him then up the other side of the mountain to Caiaphas's house, where he will not back down. Mm-hmm. And that scripture for the joy that was set before, before him. him. You know, he endured. And then his force of his love that takes him to stand before Pilate. And then ultimately the force of his love that puts him to the cross. And I would encourage anybody, if you can, come and stand mm-hmm. on this land yeah. where God told the story of his passion for us. And so I think, you know, God clearly gives us a command to pray for here. But I think when you're on the land, you will realize how instantly you love it. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jesus is coming back here. I mean, that's what scripture says. You know, and we're not just waiting for Jesus. We're waiting for the holy city descending on what we already call a holy city. The same way that he went up, he's coming right back down here to this place, you know. So it's going to happen. But we know he's not here yet. Yeah. Now he's he's with the father, right? Mm. Yeah. That sense of when you come here, it's my first time here. And for me, the richness of the echoes of Jesus as you go about Jerusalem, mm-hmm. as you go about Galilee, and you're hearing the echoes of his voice in scriptures and also even in the spirit, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and even the echoes of his teaching and even the, the echoes of his scent, if you will, in the mm-hmm. land itself. But I think also the face of Jesus, because we've been pondering that this week, haven't we, from the Genesis 32, where God said himself, I will hide my face from this nation. I will hide myself from my people. Um, and and one of the Messianic Jews, who's a, a leader in the nation, saying to us, as we ask, how can we pray? Because that's one of my things, you know, I want to really know how do we pray for this nation and these people? Yes, mm. for the peace of Jerusalem, but really what's going to spiritually shift this Yes. Nation. And he's saying, well, look at that. You know, the, the Genesis 32, I will hide my face from them. Pray that the, that God would re- reveal his face to the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you see, well, for me, who's a seer prophet, I see Jesus' face all over Ga- Galilee. You know, his face in this small place of land that is really in miniature, the globe in miniature, that God chose this land of extreme heat. Yeah. And then extreme lushness around rivers and then Gedi. And you see the, the the scriptures really sharpened, I think, don't you? The the dryness and the heat where Jesus was for 40 days. You know, in Scotland, we rain all the time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, you don't really get a sense of what it's like. But standing in that hot wind and that hot land, you think this was intense. Mm. I mean, scripture is intense. And when you come here, you really get that sense mm-hmm. of the, the intensity mm-hmm of the message of Jesus yes. played mm-hmm. out here, but he's here saying, look at my face, mm-hmm. see my face, nation of Israel. And as the nation's watching this, to pray for the the nation of Israel to see the Savior's uh, face. If I were going to say one thing, see, it was the Jew's job to bring the knowledge of God to everybody, not mm-hmm. a few. To the Palestinians, mm. to the Syrians, exactly. to it's their calling, the, isn't it? Yeah, to their... the Egyptians. I mean, you know, and uh, and and mm. the three greatest religions in the earth: uh, Islam, Christianity, and um, Judaism. Judaism mm. Come from the 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 book that was given to us by the Jews, uh, and of course, um, anyway. But uh, the the thing I think is very important is that God's heart was not just for the Jew, 
It was for all of us. It was for all of us Gentiles. It's for the Palestinians. And so mm -hmm. I think yes. the one thing, if I were to mm -hmm. tell people what to pray over this land would be John 17, that, that the church, mm -hmm. the believers who actually believe in Yeshua, that actually believe in God would become one. The true disciples of, of Jesus mm -hmm. would become one Come on. because that was that that's what Jesus said. I'm praying for my disciples and for those who will believe in me through the witness of these Jewish disciples mm -hmm. that they would be one. And I think what the what the enemy tries to do is just cause people to hate one another. And from mm -hmm. the garden, mm -hmm. you know, if he could just separate Adam from Eve and, you know, from uh, Cain and Abel, if he could just get the mm -hmm. two brothers fighting. And if, you know, and all mm -hmm. through history, we yeah. see that the devil's intent is massive division, massive mm -hmm. scattering, massive bloodshed, killing one another, and Jesus' intent. And the intent of God was that we would be one. So I think uh, you know, the, the prayer of Jesus is critical for the land of Jesus yeah. that he's yeah. coming back to. Wow, yeah. wow. I think I also felt mm. the weariness of the messianic believers here. And as we pray for their unity, as we pray for the revealed face of God. So the, and just to, to just to, I mean, people may not know, but the messianic believers means that they're Jews the who Jews. have realized Jesus is the Messiah. That's it, the believers. Yeah, Yeshua yeah. HaMashiach. Yeah. I believe Jesus is the Messiah. I'm Jewish, but Jewish now I'm a fulfilled Jew. Yeah, sorry. Yes, the Jewish believers. Uh, you know, worn down uh, by how much they're actually hated in the land. I mean, they're not given space in the land. They're not mm. honored and respected politically. They're actually persecuted, aren't they? Yeah, oh, yeah I mean, yeah. they really are a persecuting group. And... Uh, there's, there's not a great, yee you're here. In fact, quite the opposite. And I felt like God was saying, I want to resurrect their warrior spirit. Now, I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to be mean and I'm going to punch you and beat you up. But their God warrior spirit, like God awoke in Gideon. Come on. Who had forgotten what manner of man he was. Oh, my gosh. It's a great the, word. Where the, the messianic, the believer Jews, are going to remember what manner of people they are. Come on. That God has trusted them in this land with authority and, mm. and power. And the truth. And the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So that they actually can stand. I felt like God saying, I'm going to put my hand on them. And the right godly warrior Whoa. spirit will be resurrected mm -hmm. within them. You see, when we're standing at the Wailing Wall, all of us, mm -hmm. and the orthodox, non-believing Jews are there, it strikes me that when I turn up as a Christian, I'm actually praying the same prayer. Mm. They're praying for a Messiah to come for the first time. Mm. I'm praying for a Messiah to come <laughs> for the second <laughs> time. Yeah. I'm thinking, we're all praying the same thing mm. here. But I think that the warrior spirit needs to arise in the believing Jewish population so they can say, he's already been here. Yeshua, Jesus has already come. Yes. And they need their voice. And I actually feel like their voice has been cursed and that God is going to lift a curse off their vo vocal cords. Come and on. God's saying, I will give the vocal opinion back yeah. into the Messianic mm. Jewish population wow. here. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, what you're saying is crazy because they, I mean, we all know Jesus is the Messiah. Yes. So, and they've, they've yes. come into this truth and this revelation, of, which is the fulfillment of this whole land and whole mm. region that Yeshua is yeah. Hamashiach, the, yes. the, Messiah. the Messiah. And so yes. really yeah. they have so much authority here, mm. even against well, all this persecution, really. It's just mm. the, the, the devil or however he's trying to work to bring yeah. it down. Yes. But that's the truth and the liberation that the rest of the nation needs. Absolutely. And they carry it and they have the authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's a wider context that it's almost useful to touch on, on what is God doing in the nations of the earth right now? Come on. And how does Israel, you know, and fit into this? I think if we were to summarize it in maybe one sentence, new means new. New means, means new. new. Come on, put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. That's another t-shirt, guys. <laughs> new means new. New means new. Yes. The, not a rehash. We have not been, a it is, hallelujah, it's yeah. not even an upgrade of yesterday's yeah. blessing. Yeah. It, it, it's not even that. That God is so changing the epoch of time in the wow, earth. That's true. That for maybe, mm. I mean, these ladies, 25 years we've been prophesying, mm. the new is coming, the new is coming. You it's know. here. 
and, <laughs> and now it's that. here. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we're now saying this is that, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we have been pro- prophesying. New means new. And so what that means for us as leaders and for the, the leadership that is within the uh, believing Christian population here is that we have never been this way before. So we are going to feel like amateurs in the new. And we have to put our hands up together and say, I'd rather be an amateur in the new than experienced in the old. Well, yes. And that's uncomfortable, isn't it? Mm, it super. is incredibly mm. uncomfortable. Yeah. Because we, we were just actually talking about it earlier when we're having coffee. We built our platforms on our integrity, on our trustworthiness, on a proven track record. Now, we don't lose that and we don't lose our character that we've all worked on. But we're going to be doing some things that we think, who I'm not, I'm not sure, you know. I don't even know I, what I'm doing. I don't even know yes. what I'm doing. I think yes. that sums it up. And so I want to even bless the leaders as we sit in Jerusalem that that's okay. Wow. Yeah. That is okay to feel mm. a little bit like, oh, oh, Okay not oh, to know what you're doing. I don't mm. really know mm. what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And Jesus showed me a picture when Moses... I mean, it's like Abraham really... Yeah. I mean, he had a word, but he... Exactly. He, he did not... Out. Abraham, yes. not yes. knowing... Yes. Abraham mm. set out not knowing where he was going, for he was looking for the city whose Whoa. builder and maker was God. Mm. He was looking for that city. And Jerusalem is supposed to be a type of that, where all Mount Zion, mm. all the nations stream to her. And we're mm-hmm. seeing and this is the fruit. Happen. This city yes. is the fruit. And this nation, yes. this people's the fruit of that faith. I mean, it's crazy. We're, you know, on the Via della Rosa and a whole busload from China. And you can't, yeah. and the tour guide said, I've never crazy. seen it so crowded here. It was like yeah. China was filling Jerusalem. And then you <laughs> go down the next street and there's, you know, people Brazil, from all over. Yeah, wherever, expect, yeah. All, all the Brazilians. Yeah, there's loads of Brazilians it's everywhere. Crazy. All yeah. the nations are streaming to mm-hmm. Bible prophecy is happening. I mean, we don't have to. Mm-hmm. It, it, and the thing is this, that I feel like. In these days, um, we were talking about this earlier, just as prophets together from the nations, that the the thing that I'm seeing is this polarization, mm-hmm. you know, this political polarization that is happening in nation after nation after nation, where the right is getting righter and the left is getting lefter, and you know, I, and and the economy is volatile, and we're seeing kind of the early stages of nations in tumult. I mean. Uh, I, I travel every year to Brazil and to have the president impeached and, know, you know, and that, that, the shift with the, mm. you know, with the, the currencies of the earth, with the yen and all the, all the, the economic things that are going on. Mm. But I feel like if new means new. And if faith means faith, it means we don't know what's coming. Mm. We really don't. Mm. And it's God bringing believers to a higher level of faith and the, the, tem- the tendency in times of apprehension and tumult and we don't really know what's going on and we can see breakdowns happening in these, you know, places of economic breakdowns and political breakdowns it, it is fear. That is what the enemy wants exactly. us to go. He wants to stir fear. Exactly. I mean, even within Iris, all the stuff that's happening in northern Mozambique. Well, it's the fear that's causing the division as well. The fear's exactly. coming between the leaders and between all that. That's it's exactly. fear driven. They're and gonna lose something. They're gonna lose exactly. their status, they're, they're gonna gonna lose, lose their, their power, land. they're gonna lose, lose their money or whatever. Exactly. And so when whenever a believer moves into fear, we've moved out of faith. And just my just one will live by his faith. It's faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And I'm watching even nations the churches of nations because i traveled to a lot of them like start trusting in well a strong leader oh we're getting a strong president we're getting a strong prime minister oh our economy is getting stronger i i'm seeing like their trust go to a lower place and it it kind of concerns me we're supposed to pray for government but not trust in government we're supposed to you know um um we're blessed by finances in order to be a blessing, yeah. not to just hoard or, yeah. or, or, or whatever. Such a good word. And so I feel like if I could prophesy to people right now is get deep into the word of God so that when 
calamity. Foxes are coming out of the Holy of Holies and you're a Jew. You're not weeping. You're laughing. Wow. You're laughing because you know what is coming. Come I'm, on. I'm holding up my iPhone where my Bible is, but you know what is coming. You've good, read Stacey. the book. You've read the Bible. Your hope Whoa. is in the God of the Bible who His will make promises. all things well. And he's coming back to this city and the new Jerusalem's yeah. going to descend and it's it's all going to be okay. And our, our job is to bring the knowledge of God in every situation, healing, miracles, you know, that that, that the economy can go kaput. But, yeah. And there can be a coin in the fish. You know, there, yeah. there can oh, no. be miraculous. Exactly. I mean, Iris has lived. Iris of all the places. I feel like one of the, 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 the redemptive keys for the nations of the earth of Iris is that they've served the poorest of the poor mm -hmm. with so little resources. But the financial miracles... And the stories, it's like a modern day George Mueller. And we see these people serving the poorest of the poor with this, with a, a miracle provision over them. And so they can prophesy that to the rest of us. It's okay. God is never going to abandon you. You know, yeah. we're not going to see the righteous begging bread if our trust truly is in him. And so these are prophecies that are coming out of lifestyles now. And the shift of God, there's this new... I, know, I don't know the whole thing, but Abraham sort of knew it was over there and he started walking towards it. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. that the next move of God is not, I've been saying this, not, mm -hmm. not um, Sundays and weekends and evenings. It's Monday to Friday. There is a brand new leadership emerging in the Monday to Friday where the kingdom of God is advancing mm -hmm. to places where people aren't coming to the churches or to the meeting or to the house of prayer, but the believers are advancing the kingdoms and miracles are happening mm. in the marketplace, Come in the on. university class. That's mm. where, because the people of God are not afraid. They're walking towards mm -hmm. the place. I have to say, I think God is sweeping the children into that. I know I yes. have three little ones that their nine to five is their school. school. Yes. yes. And... I mean, my daughter, is it time for a test? My daughter, she said to me, Mommy, you know, Mommy, I want to give you a massage. And I said to her, Jessica, you don't know how to massage. Jesus taught me. Okay. And she <laughs> said, um, she said, I heard you teach Mommy on Hebrews 6 that the laying on of hands was a, a basic doctrine. So she said, I just asked Jesus, how could I lay hands on all my friends uh, secretly wow. so they would all get saved? She said, Jesus said to me, line them up on the school playground, th only three at a time, and you massage their shoulders. And Jesus said, I'll show you where to put your hands. She's oh a seer prophet. Goodness. So she saw Jesus put his hands. She oh just followed gosh. him. Jesus taught her how to massage. All her friends get saved. Oh, wow. my Lord. You know, Come she's on, Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. She was 10 years old at yeah. that point. Yeah. You know, and I think God is putting miraculous on the children mm -hmm. to do to do that where they are as well. Mm -hmm. And it's we, and we all know there's no junior Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. but um, I see it, 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 it in our That's children. exactly it. That's exactly mm -hmm. it, yeah. And I think, I think it, these changes, many of you might be feeling... Great shifts, I mean, geographical shifts or the what worked in the past season is not working anymore. Yes. Or you might even be driven out of the yes. place where you were. That's right. You know, I mean, and 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 but it's God is in the ch mm. the shift. God wow. is in the change because God is about to multiply and take you places where you've never been before. Mm. So the just one will live by his faith. Do you have no fear in this season of no. great tumult? Mm. Do not mm. trust in some some men trust in chariots, some, some in, horses, in horses, some in governments, mm. some yeah. in economies, yeah. in bank accounts, some the bank, and yeah. some of us. But our will trust in, in the name security. of the Lord. Yeah, yes. in their job security. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the biggest I think one of the biggest sort of strongholds against that. You're talking about fear. That's absolutely right. I think the other is the spirit of control, where everybody yeah. wants to say, "This is mine, mm -hmm. and I need to hold it. I need to." preserve it you know I need to keep it as it was because it's good but actually God's saying let go of it mm -hmm. uh, you know and actually That's it is because you can feel especially in this city 
where the the spirit of control is so dominant of it needs to look like this no it needs to look like this and you've got so many groups Mm -hmm. and i feel like one of the the strongholds in this time where new is new is that spirit of control so everybody watching really Mm -hmm. needs to say i break agreement with the spirit of control you know i'm not going to let that spirit of control come and tell me that i have to keep things as they are whether it's business whether it's government whether it's church leadership or even charity leadership for iris whatever it looks like god is saying i'm flipping the tables you know Mm -hmm. i'm turning things around it's not even going to be look look like a divine reversal where things look similar to what they look like it's brand new and the spirit of control wants to go let me keep it just as yeah, it is or even let me keep because it's going to stop the new coming right. control Absolutely. will stop the new if, if we say you know even uh, you know it has to look a bit like this because this has always worked for us and we have to keep this stream going or yeah. you know I have to keep this bank account right. even God is saying right it's all it's hands off everything's mm. new you let it change you know we've got our own business in an old wineskin it has so to there's be all new seasons for wineskins and God says he doesn't mm. want to lose either the wine or the wineskin yeah so he has to create something, a new mm. structure, new leaders, and he keeps he keeps yeah. the old. We honor the old. We honor. Yeah, God all is of sentimental. That. He does have that sentimental. He does, he does yeah. keep the old. Thank you, God. I'm very <laughs> sentimental. I'm glad he keeps the old, but he brings the new as well. Yeah. It's uh, not either or. It's yeah. both and more. Yeah. And it's when we try to shove feed, new and old. Hey, that's another well, we T-shirt. To, it's yeah. not either or. It's both and more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get that. That's a T-shirt. Yeah, another that. T-shirt. Send me one. Yeah, you have a whole new shop of T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. I think as well. Do you not. make T-shirts? No, oh, I should though. You are. Yeah. I got T-shirt ideas every, every podcast. Tell them, make them, and sell them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also felt God say to me, Emma, would you become like Moses when he was a baby, where his mum picks him up? and wraps him up and puts him in the basket. There's a helplessness to that. And really, he's he's there's no control there. I mean, he yeah. has to Vulnerable. yield to... Oh, and his mother, too, yielded to put him in that river with oh, crocodiles. Yeah. And the hippopotamuses. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And the sense that God is saying, would you, and let, pharaohs and <laughs> would you let me do that with you and swaddle you so that you cannot even... Move. Go and do what you would normally oh do. Oh my gosh! And because swaddling is soft. yeah, you're like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're had a baby, you know, that's like yeah. Yeah. Would Can't you trust it. me yeah. that I will loose you and push you and take you to the the shores of your greatest influence? Oh my gosh! But you have to surrender that level in this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Because we we like to be more in control than we would ever mm. dare admit. Oh no, I'm That's yielded. Absolutely I've, true. I've yeah. prayed Isaiah six. Here I am. You know, I've done it with tears in my eyes. Oh no, but I'm my diary. You know, and what I'm going. And actually, God blowing across the page of the diary, but pinning mm. my arms down and saying, "Come on, Emma. Mm. This is what it's going to take to, for me to get you." Mm. And I think the feeling. The dominant oh, feeling emotionally that we are going to have, and again, we were talking about this as prophets, mm. is disconnected. If you yeah. feel unsettled, if you feel disconnected, I want to go, yay, well done, you're right on time. Mm. Why? Because it means that you have shifted to stand on the shores mm. of, of the, the new. new. Whoa. And it's it means you're from disconnected the from the old. And actually it means... Oh, I but don't know. It's like you're out of space. You're just letting your flight I don't know gotcha. quite how to take a decision. So internally, we're going to start to feel a little bit disconnected. Yeah. And that would normally uh, scare us. Mm-hmm. Or but f- I, freak us out. Yes. <laughs> but I think that feeling of disconnection now makes us go, we, and this is a word you, if you feel disconnected, you need to go, thank you, Jesus. Mm. I've left the old. Mm. I feel wow. disconnected. Thank you, mm-hmm. Jesus. I have not got out of time. Mm-hmm. I am on time with you. It means I'm standing on the banks of the new. Mm-hmm. So good. Wow. That's mm-hmm. so encouraging. And if you don't feel disconnected, <laughs> yeah. get disconnected. <laughs> Unhook. <laughs> Unhook. Yeah, that control thing is huge. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, it's funny that, de- I mean, Death does that, doesn't it? When you're when you're getting close to death, yeah. you have to let go of everything. I mean, yeah. my father just passed away recently, and I just oh, saw that whole process mine happen. Too. And yeah. and it's just the letting go. And it's like, guys, don't wait. Yes. Do it now, you know. And it's just and generosity too is the same thing. It's letting go of 
it's my my oh can i share wow it's 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 huge now look we're almost out of time guys so i want to release you now just to say or pray over our viewers guys out there listening so yeah just yeah if you just all take a turn and and take us out So, Father, we just thank you for all those who are watching. Yeah. And we pray right now, Father, that you would just cut them into the new, that they Come would on. be released into the new. And we, we just bless you into the new. For whatever wow. is in your hands right now, that the exchanges that need to happen will happen even in this week, that there would be a strong shift and a degree shift mm-hmm. and a spiritual shift. And even for some of you, a geographical shift, mm-hmm. doors that need to That's open it. in nations, yeah. doors that need to open of finance. We say, let them now be open to you in Jesus' name. And for some of you who are actually feeling like really on shaky ground, the Lord says, stand over and step into this new place that I have prepared for you, says the Lord, for there is a firm foundation. And for some of you where things are looking really uncertain, where some of you are making decisions about relationships, marriages, uh, new business uh, relationships, even promotions, I'm watching in the spirit over you guys, that the Lord is saying, shift now, move now. Now is the time. This is the month, uh, October. Uh, we're in, are we in October? Yes, yep. October's the month anyway. Even if we're not, October is the month, the Lord is saying, to step into the new. We know that we're in the new year um, of the Hebrew new year, but there's a sense of the new is now and it's time to step into it. Mm-hmm. So for those of you that are feeling fearful, we bless you in the shalom of God. We bless you in the mm-hmm. peace of God to step fully into this new place that he has prepared for you. And there are things that are going to look completely disorientating, completely different. But the Lord says, trust me, trust me. Like Stacey was saying, trust the word of the Lord. Trust the word of the Lord for your life, but also trust the word of the Lord for this time and this season of stepping into the new. Yeah, and I feel like there's somebody out there that is uh, watching this, that you're very passionate for God. You're so in love with God. You just want to go to the mission field. You just want to go into the ministry. And the Lord is saying, uh, but you're, you're gifted. You're gifted in business in particular. You're gifted in the power to make wealth. And even though you could, you know, sacrifice the one for the other, I feel like the Lord is saying that your greatest anointing will be like Joseph if you go in to the business world, wow. that God's going to bless you in that business world. God's going to bless you Monday to Friday. God, you are going to uh, create so much wealth that you're going to be a blessing to your employees. You're going to be a blessing to their families. God's going to give you ideas and you're going to have a church, quote unquote, like you're going to be like a pastor. You're going to be like wow. an apostle Come on. on the Monday to Friday where God is moving and you're going to have far more influence in the future, in the days to come, come on, if Jesus. you choose this one, because the kingdom is Whoa. not Sunday morning, the kingdom, and God's going to give you whole new innovative ways. And you're already innovative, but you're so passionate that you you uh, you want to just go into ministry. This will be like Joseph, your ministry, like Daniel, your ministry. So I, I just bless you as you wait on the Lord to, to get that confirmation. I just want to raise my hands to you because I feel like the word God's just dropped into my spirit is the word permission. You Mm. have permission in a history of sometimes abuse, in a history where you feel uh, that you have not been allowed to choose or make decisions. I feel like God is saying, here, have my Mm. permission. Just as I raise my hands, you grab hold of it. There is permission to shift, to choose, Mm -hmm. to leave, to cleave somewhere else, to realign. And the Lord says, it is the day of the big decision. And the Lord is blessing you with leadership Mm. mantles that you may start to stride ahead so that others will follow. And the Lord says, the leadership comes upon you, but permission for change is now granted, says God. Whoa, come on. Mm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Can you feel that? This is unbelievable. Thank you for this word, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving your lives for the sake of him and his kingdom to come. And 
And you too. Yeah. yeah. You too. Well, thank Come you. Come on, yeah. work. Come yeah. on. Multiply. Come on. Multiply. Yeah. And um, it's just it's just crazy because yeah, it's such a this word of letting go is is huge, and mm-hmm. God is doing new stuff. And and maybe mm-hmm. if it's the Monday Friday, maybe we can all start to do the Sabbath again. Come on. Because we'll do the church Monday and Friday. We have to. <laughs> maybe we need our Shabbat rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you. Now, what's your website, guys? In case uh, people- Glasgow Prophetic Center. And, and the and dot com or yeah dot com Bla- just Google yeah. that yeah Glasgow, Glasgow Prof- hyphen prophetic mm-hmm. hyphen center dot org dot but UK. if you put in uh, prophetic Scots because uh, we're in Scotland mm-hmm. or Glasgow prophetic center it comes up it comes straight away search. great oh, there yeah. you go guys and now Stacey what's your website well oh. we have a couple but we have a uh, uh, WesleyStaceyCampbell.com, dot com but or glo- or g transformation dot org for global transformation dot org I'm working with a Brazilian a girl who lives in the states. Uh, about transformational initiatives for the next move of God Monday to Friday. So you can check things out on gtransformation.org or mm-hmm. our ministry for the poor, be a hero.org. Be a hero. Come on, be a hero. Come yeah, on. that's yeah, yeah. awesome. Come on. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks for listening. We are here on the ground in Jerusalem, and this has been incredible. Leave your comments below. And if that's you, if that word was for you, let us know. Yeah. Because, uh, Stacey, I don't know if you knew this, but our guys that came and taught in our arts, in our the art track in our ILFM school, and uh-huh. They got a word from you. You stopped in a God TV thing and went, I'm having a word for somebody. And you looked at the camera and gave it. And it was for our art teachers to get them. There were older couple that moved from Philadelphia out to Los Angeles because of your word, because you stopped and gave a word to the camera. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you'll meet Praise them. The yeah, okay. I'll probably bring, bring them up for the thing. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. But guys, if you need to watch this show, it's on YouTube. Also, download the Iris Global app on your iPhone or your Android. Go to the Google Store or the, or the App Store on your iPhone. Download Iris Global. And um, we love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.org. You can also text to give. Simply text the amount you'd like to donate to 530-338-3837. Or to speak to someone at Iris Global, call our office at 530-255-2077. Iris Global is an international Christian mission and relief organization with a focus on working amongst the poorest of the poor and those most in need. We hope this podcast has inspired your journey. Thanks for joining us for Iris After Hours.